Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Dr. Lonnie Herman, who's the creator of the Rapid Health Restoration System, and we'll be talking about what causes chronic disease. Dr. Herman, welcome back to the program. Hey, great. Thank you for having me on again. I really appreciate this uh, this conversation we get to have with people. You are welcome. And I think that if I am the uh, you know curious learner uh, that I am, I would hear the phrase chronic disease and be thinking, well, what's the bullet points up underneath that? Actually, what what is chronic disease? So give us some definition uh, and clarity around what chronic diseases actually are. Well, chronic disease, I'd say, is the category of diseases or and or symptoms that people suffer from for a long time. It's not that somebody just had a cold, for example, and they got over it within a week or two or just a couple of days by taking some vitamin C or using some type of over-the-counter medication like a NyQuil or something. We're talking different types of symptoms, whether it's dealing with skin rashes that can last for many years for some people, unfortunately, that doesn't have to anymore, by the way, but even to conditions like uh, asthma or uh, for conditions like migraine headaches or conditions like heart disease. And then we can get into other categories like autoimmune diseases, like for example, lupus is a chronic longstanding horrible autoimmune disease or a uh, multiple sclerosis disease, or even somebody suffering from a condition like incontinence, bladder incontinence, doesn't matter the age. People can live with that condition for 20 years of their life or 30 years of their life. So chronic means longstanding and disease. We can look at it as a, anything that's away from the normal healthy function, normal healthy appearance of the human tissue without symptoms. You know, that's a great point. And it really gets back to what you in your mind you think of as a disease. And you think of like these, the biggies, the ones that get, you know, headlines like, oh, cancer or heart disease or things sure. like that. But if you think about too, chronic fatigue syndrome, well, that's a fatigue syndrome that is ongoing because that's the chronic side of things. But if you think about um, like eczema, I would not have thought eczema would be considered a chronic disease, but you know what? If ease is the feeling of something good and comfortable, dis-ease is the opposite. So right. now if you, it opens it up and broadens your mindset of, okay, now if eczema is ongoing and chronic, that's a disease, that's a dis-ease. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some commonalities um, across many different types of chronic diseases? I know severity might be one, like we've mentioned, heart disease is a lot more severe than eczema because it has, you know, long standing. But what are some of the other commonalities that would spread across many types of chronic disease? Uh, well, one is it can cause people emotional torment. Ooh. You know, people can be living with a eczema, for example, or a terrible skin rash. That's not called eczema. And it's it's embarrassing for them. It's irritating. They may literally have anxiety that's caused by this constant nonstop skin rash, terrible irritation where they're up at night scratching or they can't wear certain clothes even in the summertime. They won't go to the beach or be at a pool. They've got to cover, you know, with a bathing suit, they've got to cover their body because the rash to them is completely embarrassing. And that is if they can cover it, if it's not covering their face, the rash. Um, other people with something like asthma, where they just have a really difficult time breathing, whether it's a environmental induced asthma, meaning it's from being around a cat or being around a horse or being around, let's say, pollen or being around uh, 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 dust or something where people are just totally emotionally stressed because it's hard to breathe. Maybe the inhaler is not helping them as good as their respiratory therapist thinks it would. Uh, so people can, it, it's a constant struggle for people uh, to try to get along in life and try to advance in their life because these symptoms are just literally holding them back. Even if a steroid or even if a medication or even if an herbal type of supplement is aiding them to some degree or another type of immune suppressant medication is decreasing the symptoms to some degree, it's always on their mind because they feel 
Uh, most of the people who I work with and work for to help them get better, they just feel trapped in their body and they need a way out. So it's common that there's emotional stress. It's common that there's physical stress. It's common that there can be relationship problems. There could be interference in a child's uh, uh, ability to go through school easily. I mean, there are some brain fog conditions or or, or respiratory or digestive problems where even young adults can't even get through uh, a semester in school because they're constantly out of doctors, they're constantly in bed at home. It's just embarrassing. It's stressful. And that goes for any condition, whether it's younger or older. With a person who's got a heart disease condition, there are many people who have helped get better and resolve their heart condition completely. They're constantly, prior to coming to me, that is, constantly under stress. They've got to take their medicines on time. They've got to constantly check their blood pressure. They've got to multiple taking off days from work, missing vacations uh, to because their their condition is so severe. And that goes across the board with any kind of chronic disease. Uh, so you, know, you, you bring up a huge point there with the emotional and the stress because you would think that, oh, um, eczema, let's get this rash taken care of, check. But it's not that easy. And secondly, when you are having that constantly on your mind because you're you're thinking about how what do people think and how do I feel? And then you've got to manage it. So oh, I've got to hurry up and go over to get this treated, you know, throughout the day or or irritable bowel syndrome, maybe that I I can't eat a meal without thinking about all of those things. I feel like people have in their mind, here's the issue, let's fix it. But all that ripple effect about what you just mentioned, boy, that is a, that is a weight on someone's shoulders that really uh, draws them down. And it's not just that disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are people who tell me who come to me from around the world uh, uh, or across this country uh, where I'm down in Southeast Florida right now, they can't even, whether it's a woman or a man, they can't even go in the airplane. They've got to sit. If they do, they've got to be right by the bathroom because the bladder is so irritated that they have to go every, no exaggeration, 15 minutes. Imagine living by the toilet every 15 minutes to go empty your bladder, or they can't even take a car drive because their body is dizzy while driving or they're short. And when you're booking that trip or restaurant uh, visit, you you always have to think, well, where am I going to sit? And, oh, I can't get that seat. So now I'm even more amped up. And so it's not just a matter of dealing with it. It's boy, yeah, you bring up those points about, wow, now I've got to pay extra for a seat on a plane or, oh, the restaurant's crowded and I'm way in the back and now the restroom is up front. That's a mental duress. And so when you can relieve those symptoms and the issues that we're talking about, it does so much more for their well-being than just relieving that chronic disease. I think that is a really neat uh, aha. Absolutely. So what, you know, I know that this is not a yes or no or one answer question, but what causes chronic disease? Great question. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I'll tell you one of the, uh, one of my postgraduate or areas of postgraduate study was in neuroimmunology. And the immunologist who taught us in that program, he, uh, over 40 years in the industry has patents. He's very well known, peer reviewed journals he's in. He had patents or has patents on many different uh, discoveries of antibodies, meaning supposedly, as the medicine says, the immune system is attacking the body, causing lupus or causing a Hashimoto's thyroiditis or causing a celiac disease, for example. He discovered many of these antibodies, a very smart man. And he showed us that uh, with research papers from journals around the world that were written by scientists who were not funded by drug companies. So in these laboratory experiments, these were not funded by drug companies where the drug had to be the answer to to reduce the symptom or to quote unquote cure the disease. And what these scientists, uh, these papers, he gave us dozens of research papers and even taught me how to research on my own after we completed the course. Uh, So he showed us these papers where these scientists revealed that it was chronic hidden, deeply embedded infections in different tissues of the body. I'll give you an example in a moment. And even toxins that had existed in certain tissues made the disease of the tissue occur. One example, there was a study that was done where in rheumatoid arthritis, uh, patients with rheumatoid arthritis, excuse me, and they took biopsies of the tissues of the gums, biopsies of tissues of the joint fluid between let's say different joints in the fingers, or in the wrist, or in the elbow, or in the ankle, or in the toes. And they found in the joints the same, they found parasitic infection, 
and residues of bacterial infections. And they found the same uh, infections and chemicals in the gums of these patients. Wow. So we've heard before gingivitis, you know, heart disease, or you've heard that those statements from like toothpaste uh, commercials and from the dentist. Well, they were able to prove that it was, and they came up with a pretty bold statement and a pretty true statement that it was the parasitic and bacterial infections that were making the inflamed joints occur. They even found in that study, that one of many studies, uh, that arteries that were hardening in the person's body with rheumatoid arthritis, thinking of relating it to heart disease or a stroke or, or stress or high blood pressure, they found that these arteries were hardened because it was the infections, the parasites and bacteria that were in the lining of the artery that made the artery harder, not from a cholesterol placking in the artery. And mm-hmm. we can go on down the list. It was interesting what the what this immunologist showed us that a filling from a toothy, so-called silver filling or dental amalgam filling in the tooth, left the tooth, not left, but some of it migrated as a mercury or silver amalgam vapor migrated through the tooth, through the root of the tooth, through a blood vessel in the jaw, right down the neck blood vessels, like the carotid artery, right into the thyroid. And that was causing the thyroid disease in the person. So running a regular thyroid hormone blood test couldn't give us the answer that it was the dental mercury that got into the thyroid, that disease of thyroid. And those are just a couple of different uh, points, but it's infections and chemicals that get into parts of the brain, that get into the lymph system, that get in the stomach and the heart, and the list uh, goes on. It's all these diseases have one common thing. Infections and chemicals get deeply embedded in tissues of the body and make the symptoms occur and make the disease occur. And yeah, that and and like I said, it's not an easy. Oh, here's the answer. It's it's a myriad, a spider web, a uh, uh, cascading effect, which is, which means it's not. Let's Google this, fix this. I'm done. It means I need someone like yourself to kind of be uh, a detective and investigate. Right. So yes. whenever I personally have something that goes wrong and I want to prevent, I go, what could I have done to prevent it? Or if I have something that goes right. I'm like, oh, I want more of that. How can I do it again? So that makes your response there makes me think, how can chronic disease be prevented? Be prevented is a great question. Uh, So we've got to do things that can possibly help us strengthen our immune system. uh, And that goes that there's a long list of possibly certain vitamins and minerals. Most people it's discovered are minerally deficient. So there is an idea that, um, with mineral deficiency, uh, infections can grow. So it because mineral deficiencies, which most of our soil is minerally deficient now, by the way. So when foods are grown from mineral deficient soils, we're getting minerally deficient foods that we're consuming, and we just don't fulfill what the body truly needs in order to be healthy uh, in, in that respect. So mineral deficiencies, nutrient deficiencies of certain vitamins and and good fats and omegas and and so on. These can lead to also a depressed immune system. But we've got to think further that even with great nutrition, we've really got to understand that there are so many toxins in the environment. We've got weed killer that's in a lot of our foods for the past 20 plus years. We've got certain toxins that are in the water supply, even though we can use a water filter. I can go into a much longer discussion about that. But while we are absorbing these different toxins through food, through water, uh, which do harm us and make us more susceptible for infections to take over our body, like a flu virus, for example. It's also possible that other other toxins that are common in human life, like from having a dental procedure, the anesthesia that's injected in the mouth doesn't simply leave the body when the mouth numbness wears off and we can feel our mouth. Again, anesthesia chemicals or sedatives used in certain other surgical procedures or in colonoscopies or endoscopies, these different Mm. procedures, these chemicals stay in the human body and they also lead to wearing down of our defenses. Uh, And these are things that I find in people with my work, which we'll we'll, talk about later. Uh, But so we can do things to prevent from a healthier diet, from meditation, from getting a lot of sun, making vitamin, sure vitamin D is good. Blood sugars have to be in the normal range. We can measure with a blood test, eat a healthy diet, eat a clean organic food diet. Yet um, there's usually so many different uh, uh, toxins that are in our systems and infections that we picked up over the years. 
that even though we can get rid of, let's say we had mono as 15 years old or we had the flu at 20, it just because the symptom is relieved from, let's say, the mono experience for two weeks or three weeks of feeling sick or the flu seemed we got over it after I don't know, a, a few days or a few weeks, those viruses don't just leave the body and the toxins don't simply leave the body. The body's not strong enough to get rid of those things on its own. And that's where my work comes in. Yeah. You know, and now that we, we know some of the causes and we know that, well, maybe it can't always be prevented. And you know what? Um, I think the phrase air quotes, it's not your fault is really important to think about here because if you have a chronic disease, it's not your fault. You didn't do anything. You know, it's not like, oh, you shouldn't have. So once one becomes, you know, apparent in your, your life, Now the question is, what do you do to manage or treat it? And I would like to ask that question from the perspective of physically as well as emotionally, like you've touched on before, because you've got both the emotional aspect that we we mentioned, as well as now that I know I've got this chronic issue or disease, how do I manage it both physically and emotionally? That's great. So first, I will say that until somebody gets to work with me or me with and or me with them, I'll say, uh, and uh, some people have to resort to what is common to them. They can go to if it's emotional and they're depressed, they're anxious, if they're going to hurt themselves, they do need some other type of professional uh, intervention, whether it's they need a psychiatrist or they need a psychologist. Okay, if they're totally inflamed and they have been diagnosed with lupus or some other terrible disease, or they have a thyroid that's not working well, they do need some medical intervention. Okay. So there's different types of, uh, uh, of treatments that are offered in the medical community but, but to help them reduce the symptom of or the severity, hopefully reduce the severity of those symptoms so that they can survive and then seek out this type of care that I'm offering, help get rid of the causes, help yeah. clean out the cells so that they can be healthy. So with that said, We've got to, so emotional, some people need some help, but what I just, from medical, but what I found is that uh, for people who have been sick with depression, with anxiety for literally decades of their life, who we've helped reverse it, we've helped them to restore normal emotion uh, in their in their brain and their body and their environment and with their family. Uh, because what I discovered is that there's infections that get into parts of the brain and chemicals that get into parts of the brain that create emotional turbulence, if we can say. There's parts of the brain that make us anxious. There's parts of the brain that make us depressed. Depressed. Yes. There's parts of the brain that can make us happy. So what would happen when a virus like an influenza gets up into the part of the brain That's known as the amygdala of the brain. This part of the brain that is the fear, panic, anxiety part of the brain. When it's stimulated, anxiety happens. What would happen if somebody's healthy one day and they're anxious the next? And it wasn't because there was a car accident. It wasn't because some, you know, something terrible happened in their life or a friend's life and they got anxious. What if that flu virus got in them and got up into that part of the brain that controls anxiety and that flu is triggering that amygdala and it makes them anxious? So they can go to a doctor and take an anxiety med or take a vitamin or a supplement, but until they get rid of that flu that's in there, literally, or the dental anesthetic got into that part of the brain, for example, not blaming a dentist at all here. It's just that the, the, when, we have inter, when we have invasion of chemicals and toxins into an emotional part of the brain, like the amygdala, anxiety will happen. And they could be plagued with that for years until I get to work with them and clean these things out of them that made it happen and get them back to a homeostasis, get them back to a calm way. So. In order to prevent these uh, things, do the best with diet, do the best with exercise, get, you know, live a clean uh, life. Uh, But we've got to be able to start to investigate the body of the sick individual and the brain of the sick individual and find these different disease causing infections and chemicals and clean them out and have a person get back to normal uh, feeling and function. Mm -hmm. You know, it made me think of something too that once you have that source uh, identified, And then once you identify the plan, treatment plan moving forward, does, don't you think, or, or, or maybe have you in your experience seeing your patients improve emotionally, incrementally, even right away, because they see there's hope 
and they see progress and they start, you know, of course the treatment protocol might be one day, one month, one year. It's going to vary. We know that, but what do you see their emotional improvement, even from the front end, because they go, thank you. You've identified this. I know it's going to take time, but now they see hope. That does happen. I'll tell you, but the more I do my work, uh, I'm glad you did ask it that way. And there are people who do have hope and they're, they're hanging, but they're sometimes hanging on by a thread. Yeah. Sometimes they're sick for decades and they've been to multiple doctors, multiple hospitals, multiple imaging studies, multiple blood tests. They've had spinal taps. They're just ill. And I'm talking ill. They could be anxious. They can be depressed. They can have stomach pain and high blood pressure and brain fog and irritable bowels all in one package and rash, skin rash all in one package and uh, in one person. And so I've had to really think in great detail and great, as you brought up earlier in this discussion about being that detective, I've got to be able to understand what's in their environment that can trigger them to, even though they start to have hope when I start to describe what I find in them and that are going to help lead them through this and come out of this condition, it's still that there are certain triggers in the environment. doesn't mean that the husband is bad to the wife or vice versa. It could be that certain fragrances in their home yep. are triggering yep. a virus in the brain or a lotion that they're using on their skin is actually triggering the infection in the skin to continue the eczema, for example. So sometimes it's not the simple uh, overnight, you know, I feel hope, but they do start to realize that we can start to unravel these things and come out of it. So yes, hope, but still there are some that are hanging on by a thread where it could take a bit more personal one-on-one coaching uh, and help to get them there. And that holistic approach of being that detective, finding the source, giving them hope, working on the emotion as well as the physical and knowing that there's a plan and protocol for their treatment. Um, that's what you provide. So wrap us up with, uh, if anyone is interested in learning more about how you can help with that chronic disease that they may be experiencing, how can they learn more? And then also how can they reach out and connect with you? Thank you very much for offering that. Um, well, it's very simple. People can call my clinic one way or email my clinic. They can call my clinic at 954-370-3100. That's our present number. They can email my clinic at clinic at Dr. 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 Lonnie Herman.com. Or they can go to my website, www.drlonnieherman.com. And there's a free copy uh, of my ebook about how they can heal themselves with quantum, quantum energized medicine to rid these incurable supposedly quote-unquote incurable diseases, they can rid them uh, with my work. Uh, So there's a lot of information on the website and there's easy contact uh, uh, things to click to the phone number or email that's right there on the website. It's easy to find. Excellent. Well, Dr. Herman, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.